Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where the Commander Clash crew joins me for uh, a fun little uh, uh, talk about the worst rares ever printed, and the ones that we find the most interesting that have potential in Commander. So we're going to talk about like 10 or so of, of our favorite worst rares, and then we're all going to brainstorm collectively to figure out, is there any potential, is there any way to salvage this card in Commander? Um, way after uh, the time that they got printed, usually. Um, so joining me today, <laughs> joining me today uh, for this experiment, we've got, first up, we've got Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How's it going, Seth? Doing well. How are you today, Tomer? Good to see you. Doing Doing great, doing great. There's so many cards here that I've I, never recognized in my life. So this is I great. love bad cards. I've made a magic career off of playing bad cards. So this podcast is like right up my right up my alley. This is like this a is list of against the odds turf. cards. Yeah, this this is my yeah. my area of expertise. So I'm ready. Some of these are going to be writing down like next up on against the Seth, odds. Seth's, like, quoting, uh, Seth's quoting Bane. I was molded yeah. by the bad cards. Yeah. Born into it. Born into it. <laughs> <laughs> and that voice that you just heard is the Asian Avenger, also known as Krim. How's it going, Krim? Uh, it goes well. Uh, I'm I'm pretty excited. I had to reread a lot of these cards and wonder why they were ever printed. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it was a good time. It was a good time going over these. Great. And then next up, we got Richard, who I think is going to convince us that all these cards are actually really good. Uh, how's it going, Richard? Hey, Tomer. I'm pretty sure the average power level here is greater than skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> the bar Real. is so low for you. You're like, oh my god, this is this so is much better than skeleton list. Tribal. Tomer, you've <laughs> It's that just might sound... Richard's deck lists. <laughs> Wait, is this card better than the Cartographer's Hawk? Wait a minute here. <laughs> Where's Cartographer's Hawk? I was wondering, maybe I should put like some of those cards on this list, like Cartographer's Hawk and like yeah. Spirited Companion. Like. I was thinking putting Solemn here just to troll half the thing. Oh, Fletching, Fletching Osprey, Osprey deserves Fletching a Fletching Osprey spot. deserves a mention. That, that card is legit bad. Why is that not on here? <laughs> it's it's, it's an uncommon. We gotta save it. We gotta save it. Oh, yeah. right, right. These it's are the saved worst by its by rarity. Way. You know, yeah. we... we, we Oh, we should have done worse cards that Richard has beat us with in an episode of Commander <laughs> Clash. <laughs> that would be like a four-part episode, though. Like, we, that, that would take a while to go through. Like, oh, and then he beat us with Kithkin. Yeah. And then birds. Us, and then birds again. <laughs> yeah. And then he You're beat us with like MVP All-Stars that again. carry the Commander birds. format. I don't know what's going on. Birds again. Like, Richard... <laughs> Richard legitimately, when he saw this list we made, his criticism legitimately was these cards are too good. Like, yeah. your cards are not. I thought this was like the worst list of cards in Magic's history. And Richard's like, no, these cards are all good. What are you guys doing? <laughs> all right. Well, so let's kick things off. Uh, Richard, you take it away with a card. Let, let, I want to hear your opinion if you think this card is good or not. This is a land that I, you have to explain it to me. So read it slowly, please. Okay. Okay. Soros <laughs> Path. Okay. Uh, hold on, let me, let me get the original set this is from, because we have the, it's from The Dark, okay? I got, I got to lead in and squint, because there's a lot of text, so it's a land, <laughs> you tap it, choose two target blocking creatures and opponent controls, if each of those creatures could block all creatures that the other is blocking, remove both from combat, each one then blocks all creatures the other was blocking, Whenever Soros Path becomes tapped, it deals two damage to you and each creature you control. What? This is a good I, card. I, what? Okay, so I was, I was my understanding is you choose part. two blockers and you swap like whatever the heck they're blocking. Now, what this means when you have banding and like hundred handed one, I don't know, but essentially you're just swapping blockers. It's a land that taps for no mana, and you also pay uh, two to your life, to your face, and two to each creature you control when you do this. You pyroclasm your board. You pyroclasm <laughs> your own board to switch to this, like You get to mess Wait, with combat. You get to so mess with combat. You don't even tap for that mana, this is though. Like, like, playable? It doesn't even, no, 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 doesn't no, no, even no. make mana. Are, do you think this is good, Richard? Because you're making it. Your tone makes it sound like you think this is good. And I, second I, I, off, there could be a deck where this is actually no, usable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, not like I a think, generic deck. You wouldn't put this in a good pile deck, but like where you mess with combat, right? Uh, I no. I think it's best use. No, I don't. I like mean, goading. 
Okay, okay, I can't okay. imagine. What if you have a trample creature, right? Yeah. And they block. <laughs> And then you have another lured up creature or something. You swap it around so they just take like the full brunt of trample. <laughs> in commander, do they care? Mm, terrible trample <laughs> impact. I, oh, trample okay. Impact. I actually have, so blight steel trample death touch. Right? <laughs> I have an idea. I actually have an idea. This is this is like five D chess. You play. You play. So dinosaurs have a mechanic called enrage, oh. where whenever they take damage, they have a beneficial trigger. So. You, so you run this car, right? And yeah. you just you hope you wait until your opponents <laughs> you wait until your opponents block with two creatures. You see, <laughs> then you tap Not it. Ironically, <laughs> you, you just use it to pyroclasm your board and trigger yes. enrage. But you you can only you can only activate it when your opponents are blocking two creatures. So you need another card. You see, you need Yavamaya Cradle of whatever <laughs> that turns all your lands into forests. So now you can tap it for green. So that solves that first yeah, hurdle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or and now you can tap it for green it. and pyroclasm of your board and enrage your dinosaurs. Boom <laughs> combo. So I, so you're playing yeah. the same line Stumpy that dolls, I have, Boris right? Reckoners. Like, like when I when I'm on when I'm on arena and like it's such an unwinnable match, I play to my outs and my out is that they have Spectrum ISP and then, then their internet cuts out. That, that's that's what I'm hearing from this. Right? Like so, if our opponent's internet just cuts out mid game here, we win. Look, it's just like, a three card combo. You get the, you get the you get the land that you need to tap make a tap for green. Then you have to have enraged creatures. Even a combo. Like no, wait, 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 wait. we're in Kamigawa. What okay. if? We use Bushido <laughs> by, by stacking up the blockers. <laughs> Adding a really bad mechanic. <laughs> I, I, don't think it's that, I, I think someone could unironically play this somewhere. Like it's not Your too opponents far. need to block with two uh, uh, creatures for it to activate, Richard. Two creatures? Richard, what if they just don't block? Like you don't do anything uh, with those are, cards. Or they block great. with this, one creature. This is like creature. a rose passage that costs you nothing. <laughs> well, it costs you life in a land that doesn't ever, man. Uh, what about just You might accidentally it? kill the creature you want. It's a rogue's passage. It's just like, uh, have you ever, have you ever seen... Path. It has pretty it has, much rogues passage by a novel by Richard. <laughs> That's the tagline of the title of this video. It has the city of brass wording. So if it becomes tapped in any way, it's gonna do that. The pyroclasm two damage. So what about like giving it to your opponent and then like Ooh, twiddling, twiddling it or something, like exchange control <laughs> of it for a real land and then have ways to like tap permanence and just keep wrapping your opponent's board or like tapping and untapping it and kill them? Like that would be okay, sweet. That, that's that's funny. Like that's funny. <laughs> if, if you can make the two damage like kind of like relevant here, it's so it's donating pretty funny. is is pretty pretty easy. If you have like Blim or Zed True, those two can do it. But how do you like tap and untap a land many times? Twiddle, oh, Twiddle oh, Storm. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> Twiddle. This, I, not not Isochron Scepter, but the Ice Manipulator. Is it? Yeah. Right? Tap it down. Wish it on Boom. Board. But that's gotcha. only like once per turn. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little How do you slow. Kill them. Most they of this? unban pr uh, profit of crew fix, and <laughs> then you do it every turn. <laughs> you ice, you profit of crew fix, icy manipulator, sorrows path, and a donate. Got him. Okay. <laughs> Got him. What we do you are think? So deep. That's the not even that hard. Of this working on Moto is. It, it is. Is this part uh, even, it even on Moto? It is. On it's Moto. in a master's edition, it is. so it's on oh Moto. Oh my god. Do you think oh, it that's works? Terrible. It's definitely it's definitely a legal card that you could put in your deck, but it's also Dude, definitely not going to work properly. I I just I realized something. You're all just tempting Richard, though. You're all going to get bodied by Richard this season. I know we're going to like this. this. Richard, we're he's, we're he's, crafting he's, Richard's next deck. This is our list. Well, what what I want to happen is I, I put this on the battlefield with no creatures, and then you guys are like, "Combat is rude. Someone strip mine this." <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I guys actually want to run card. it. I want to run it in Zedru now. It's also it's on the re reserve list, but it's not that expensive. Weirdly enough, probably because it's <laughs> awful. But it like it's like sixteen dollars, which is like it's not nothing. It's expensive, but like for a reserve list card, yeah, which is so unique. It pitches the Mox Diamond. Okay, yeah. <laughs> go buy yourself a nice a nice burrito and some boba with the sixteen dollars. Do not buy this. Look, card. I could Z I could give this to somebody with Zedru, and then it's okay. they lose. They're down. They don't have a, a useful land. And then I don't know how to twiddle it. But you know, like, yeah. and if you, you have a Maya, you still power class of yourself all day. <laughs> yeah. It's a tab yeah, it just becomes tab. Yeah. Doesn't matter yet. No way around it. Oh my <laughs> god, dinosaurs though. 
Dinosaurs oh. love this kind. It of is kind of really. cute within Rage. It still doesn't tap for mana though. Like uh, Maze of Ith, is that the only land in Magic's history that doesn't tap for mana and is kind of good? Temple of the False God. I feel like there has to be. Oh, come on. Oh. Oh. How do you feel about that one, Tomer? Oh. How do you feel about that one? I don't know how I became like the champion of Temple of the False God. By the way, uh, I'm, I'm like I pretty like decent in like a few decks. <laughs> because initially you were it's art. It was like the anime arch enemy rival. You started as the yeah. like someone who hated it. And then you I was such a I was such a little little munchkin. I don't want to say the other word. <laughs> I was uh, young. Like a, I was, it was like a decade ago, and I was just like poo pooing my friends who running who were running Temple of the False God. And I've just like done a one eighty, not a one eighty, but like now I think it's passable. <laughs> solid. 30. Good thing it's not on this list though. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I mean, like Cabal Coffers. <laughs> Cabal Coffers does it, does not make mana. And I've I seen Cabal have... Coffers okay, not okay, make mana many bar. times. Would you play Temple of the False God? Or would you play Sorrow's Path? <laughs> I, 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 Come on, it's Temple Wins. <laughs> that would at least. I, I, I think Temple barely edges out. This one's more interesting. I will say this is. A, I like, mean, if you're if you're running this, I give you props immediately. Is there? There's only one printing, right? So I mean, I, I'll give you props because I'm pretty sure no one will understand it. Like Richard, I just want to applaud your reading comprehension because I <laughs> that I'm was literally picking up a copy of this card. <laughs> it it hurts even to read that. It hurts just, to read that. All right, what's what's our next card? <laughs> this one I, I most associate with Seth, so I really want Seth oh. to introduce this because you're the one who introduced me to this card. Oh yeah, I, I actually made a short about this card. Uh, Wood. Elemental, we're going back to Legends. It's a four mana Elemental. It is a star star and it says, the stars in the lower right hand corner are set at the number of untapped forests you sacrifice when Wood Elemental is brought into play. So essentially, if you play this for four mana, and don't have any extra lands, it just dies. It's a zero, zero and dies. If you get up to five mana, you can sacrifice your one untapped land and it becomes a one, one. If you get up to like eight lands, you can sacrifice four and get a four, four. It's incredibly, incredibly bad. Like the hoops you have to jump through, if this just said sack forest, it would be bad. Like it, it would still be bad, but you gotta sack untap forest. So you can't even cast it at four mana. You have to get up to, to like six or eight mana to even cast it. And then you gotta sack half your mana beast and your reward is like a vanilla creature that is like not even that big. It, it is incredibly bad. I don't know if there's really any way to, to use it. Can you think of any any deck that you would actually want to put this in? Land Aristocrats. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, okay. So I, I like Titania, right? Uh, anything with, I guess, so So my initial thought was you combo it with white where you um, like Cosmic Intervention, <laughs> right? So you, you sack all your fours, you Cosmic Intervention them all back. Now it's going to be hard to cast a Cosmic Intervention because you had to sack untapped forests, but assuming you somehow had all this mana, you can then get like a billion landfall triggers or something on the way back. So I don't know. It's a weird okay. land sack outlet, right? It's I mean, like uh, a better hero. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with the body. That's a two yeah. for one. Take I, better I, hero. I, so, so for comparison, kind of Dungrove Elder is what a three mana. Star, star, hexproof. Where stars number four is you control, right? Like, yeah, just, just like straight up, power <laughs> creeps with elemental. Anyway, if you try to use it fairly, right? I think I, I think this card is actually playable, like in Titania, and it wouldn't be that much of a meme. Like, yeah. this the, the big issue with this is you need to sacrifice on tap forest. So, like, I think it's it's okay ish in Gitrog. It's probably a stretch. You probably won't have that many forests in like Lord Windgrace. But Titania, you're mono green and you want to sacrifice lanes to make your tokens with Titania's ability. Like you make a bunch of big beefy elementals. And Titania is all about, you know, sacrificing lands. And then you could like, you know, if you have a bunch of lands, you could like Splendid Reclamation and you get a bunch of landfall triggers all of a sudden uh, with like Avenger of Zendikar or whatever. Or, you know, you have Crucible World, you have Ramanon Excavator, so you can play the lands from your graveyard. You have extra land drops. Like, it, if, you're not, if you're not looking at it as like a creature that is over, wildly overcosted and more of as a way to sacrifice your lands... But it's not terrible. Like obviously, it's so much worse than like a Zuran Orb. But like, uh, but I mean, like it's, it's a style. Zuran Orb. It's too. the 
it's the same it's the same cost as escape shift like if you just want to sack all yeah. your lands yeah. you can sack them and get all your lands back and do all the same shenanigans for the same so, mana I, I i think it's redundancy right yeah. like you have an additional way to sacrifice all your like like all your forests at least and I and I do love seeing forests go bye bye in magic. So, <laughs> so, the, so is there is there a card where when a creature ETBs, untap all your lands? Intruder alarm. Well, there's like well, there's. I oh, think this card is be better if they weren't untapped oh. forests because like, how can you cast anything right? And you can't cast your combo fees to go with this either because you need to keep your lands untapped. So, so like there... Bell- Belladros Wither Bloom. It's not an ETB, but it does untap all your lands at will for like whatever amount of mana, and it's in the right colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zakama. Zakama is nine mana, but it it does. You have to cast it. that though, right? Yes, yeah, so you'd have to cast Be- it. Belladros works. That the Belladros, Belladros. line, I, I do like that. And we've I, we've actually seen Seth. You played a Belladros deck that was like all about huge land ramp. Oh, so this one oh, yeah. could like realistically have a lot of forest to sack. But the thing is, in my Belladros deck, I wanted a lot of land so I could ca- cast spells. I didn't want to <laughs> didn't want to put them all in the graveyard to make a four four. <laughs> okay, so maybe this goes back down to Titania as as the only. Uh... <laughs> Titania, I, I could see it. I could see it in Titania, just because you're gonna make a bunch of big tokens. Like that could actually, that could actually work. I don't think I'd play it in Gitrog though, or Win Grace. Like, I think there's just better ways to do. It. You can play it for the memes. The other thing is, it's actually like super expensive. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's forty bucks. Forty bucks. So it's a lot of money if you want to just play it for the, for the memes of it. But the I would list own. Is- I, like I, I, I would thing. own very like in an ideal world very few green cards, but this would be one of the ones I would own. Like like in my collection, I would Grim own. Will this. Make make an exception <laughs> for one elemental. Anything one that, elemental. that sabotages green is a good green card. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Is there any legal balance card in the format that's not restore balance? Magus <laughs> so, of the balance. Yeah, Magus of the balance. Okay, how about that? You like you, you plop That's down this big white, eater, Richard. and then you balance. So you essentially Armageddon everyone. <laughs> And that's, you, you, that's an Armageddon with so many steps. <laughs> but it's an Armageddon with the win con. You're like four yeah. four because you sacked four lands. <laughs> <laughs> but you also you're not. It's also like you have to cast wood elemental. So hopefully you have like a bunch of mana rocks, and then all of your lands should have to be forest, right? So you cast the wood elemental purely off of just your mana rock. So you have all your lands. You sacrifice all of them. Magus of the Balance costs five mana and tap it to activate. <laughs> so you basically have to wait a turn. I mean, yeah. You just, you, you, just need, you just need more mana rocks to overcome. Look, Look yeah, if, you, okay. if you do Magus of the Balance into wood elemental, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. Thank I'd you for be very mad my... that you, would... you decided to <laughs> Armageddon with a 4-4 on the battlefield. <laughs> I've I seen Armageddon no happen with a lot less. So, <laughs> Yeah, you can't be mad about this Armageddon. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty sure that I'm going to lift you up if you do that. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up, I don't even know what this card is. Uh, c- can you tell us about it, Krim? So the next card is Blessed Wind. Now... <laughs> I, hold on let, let me let me take a look here i gotta i gotta i gotta read this right so blessed wind is just target player's life total becomes 20 for seven and two white it's from prophecy at uh, sorcery speed uh, at sorcery speed so that is nine <laughs> mana you know that's that's pretty bad but <laughs> like like hold on is this that bad like, like you could, you could technically be gaining life back with this, or this could be used aggressively. <laughs> you could have it goes infinite, infinite, infinite it, life. You're like sucker. <laughs> yeah. So what's the number that you put yourself at? Oh, that sucks. You're at twenty. That's the most efficient bird spell of all time. <laughs> yeah, you just don't like one billion damage. This is this like kinda... twenty damage if your yeah. opponent's starting life total hasn't changed well, while the, while he got. The same is it actually damage? So if I had a damage doubler, would you die? I. It's not I, damage. Well, I mean, it's loss I, of I life. assume loss of you life, can, yeah. You can skull crack this. It right? is life gain. So if you're so if you're in a lower life, life total, it's life up, gain. And it's but on the, way down, on the way down, it would be loss of life, yeah, rather than damage. God, dude, can I you double feel, this in I any way be... to one shot yes, someone from You can. 40? You can one shot somebody with this. <clears throat> okay, you have wound reflection. And if you mean each end set, each opponent loses life equal to the life loss this turn. So okay. you so okay. what you do is you you make sure their opponent's your opponent's life is at forty. There has to be ways to reset their life total. 
But so you just you do that, and then you wound reflection, and then boom, that's a one shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of sweet. That works. There's a there's a demon that does that too. I think I never remember the name of it that works like wound reflection. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, that only like, costs thirteen mana. Something. I mean, I mean, sure, but look, let's be honest here. No one's gonna play around the nine mana white spell. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> but like, it's part of the wind cycle. That's that's why. That's why. Like, there's a there's this, a whole cycle of this. <laughs> yeah, but but the thing here is the the plague wind is like actually playable, oh, right? Or yeah, plague wind. Oh, oh, yes, plague wind. They're oh, all nine yeah. mana sorceries. This is, you, you may not white have white beams all over the place. Plague wind versus <laughs> blessed wind. Oh boy. I, I know we always joke about like you know like white and how they play and how they've always played, but like legitimately, it was nine mana. Someone's life total is twenty. <laughs> I mean, like, the other thing is, if you're going to use this on yourself, there's just way better versions. Like, Resolute Archangel resets your life total to your and starting your life total, and you get a 4-4 body, and it's only 7-7 seven, seven mana. Like, there, there's a few different ways that you can do it. So, I think if you're going to play it, it's got to be some sort of janky combo. But is that even, like, uh, is it even the best way to pull off that combo if you're going to Wound Reflection? Or is there, like, some 3-mana card that does the does essentially the same thing? Well, sure, but this is hilarious if you pull it off, right? <laughs> it's also in white. It's all about style. style. It's nine you play mana. this in an Orzov deck, and oh, <laughs> I'm gonna be like, I finally have nine mana. Are you all ready? You should have answered this permanent earlier because I'm gonna <laughs> life gain you. <ya. laughs> you can you can <laughs> see white why wife has it. all the memes about life gain because it really was true for most of most of Magic's history. <laughs> This was a rare card. Like I this mean, was a this card. Rare. Somebody yes. designed it and put it as rare. Like, oh, maybe hope you wouldn't open it. Someone designed for one v one, but like, who, who's going to whip out eight mana? I'm like, huh, I reset my life total to twenty or nine mana. So it's a little finally awkward. a way to beat these burn decks. Just let me get <laughs> <Got> them. <laughs> 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 I've out, you know what's funny? I think in you 2022, ambitious? burn burn could actually still burn through this, and you also <laughs> still get skull cracked. <laughs> This is probably a meta with like lightning bolt. Of course, Burr could go through this. I mean, isn't I, it just think, strictly worse than case... Archangel's Light? <laughs> Archangel's know. Light is like much. <laughs> you gain so Wait. much. You gain so much life, and it's eight mana instead of nine, and that's the worst mythic of all time. Being worse than the worst mythic of all time is probably probably not a great place to be for competitive no, play. But if in Commander, you would gain life. This one, you would lose life if you're at four. If you're a life oh, game, yeah. this is like horrendous, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I wouldn't play this in a life game, but a life loss deck. This is pretty cool. I mean, like it's it's like a uh, what? Soren costs six mana, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is this is like three more. Like, nine. <laughs> you go th you go Orzov. I I genuinely don't think this is that bad in that kind of deck. I I think you could, like. There's obviously more efficient ways you could do it, but <laughs> but like if you're willing to play Soren, set someone's health total to ten. You know this is another a redundancy effect. You can find a way to set people at twenty with wound reflection. So yeah, I mean yeah, you're winning with wound reflection and the demon, but like this is this is a piece, right? This is I a mean, piece. You, you there play is with redundancy cards, here, and this you could can be have, the greatest ooh. nine mana draw twenty or something ooh. of your life. Yeah, <laughs> I like yeah. that. Or, or, or exile you can die instantly as they remove the lich card. Yeah, yeah. lost twenty life. <laughs> Your your highest cost spell is this is great warlock class like there's ways to I think this card is actually not it's good a, but like it's it's a way it can be a win condition and it will do the job like you get I, warlock class on the battlefield same thing as wind reflection and you just you hit him maybe you do mass life gain for everybody so you're like a, a group hug deck and you just give everybody a bunch of life and then, and then take you it all away yeah. <laughs> yeah you hive mind. <laughs> <laughs> and so everyone gets a copy. <laughs> oh, you hive mind and then what's like the tainted remedy? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. There you go. Gotta. <laughs> I, I think the highest praise any card on this list can get is that it's not the worst. All right. We're moving on to a card that's actually very recent. Uh, <laughs> I think Seth added this one. This came out last year. Um, uh, so we're moving away from reserve list nonsense. Uh, this is a land called Dungeon Descent. Um, I don't even know. Did this come in the precons or something? No, this was a straight or up was standard it the main card. Set? It was in the main set. It, it, it's a legit card. Oh, it's so a forgettable. Main set, main <laughs> set garbage. <laughs> so it's what, a land. It enters the battlefield tapped. You can <laughs> tap it for one colorless mana, or you can activate it by paying four and tapping it. So like five mana total, essentially. 
uh, tap an untapped creature you control. Legendary. Into the dungeon. Gotta be a legend only as a accessory. Oh, yeah. Un- tap an untapped legendary creature you control. Otherwise, it would be too strong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Venture to the dungeon. Activate only as a sorcery. <laughs> Wow, this card's really bad. Like, put, if yeah. it entered the battlefield untapped, it probably would have been like. I don't know what they okay. were worried about. So, so they fixed <laughs> this in alchemy, by the way. The alchemy Which version they... is it enters untapped, and the ability oh. costs one to activate. Like that's how. Much, that's how much they I fixed this it. card. Is it played? No. I played no, it in it's alchemy, so bad. It's and, still and, and it was one of the worst things I've ever done in my life. I have no idea. I was like, okay, well, all right. Now that it only costs one, you know, of course I can like tap my Thalia. I played it mono white and then I played the, uh, the paladin and I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, and then I've got Redane. So there's a decent amount of legendaries here in mono white. Right. And it still sucked. Like, why would I why ever do, you do that? Yeah, why you would I ever do that? The it's dungeons, like five mana. Yeah. And the dungeons themselves don't actually do anything. Yeah, I mean, that's like. That's so the problem with dungeons. You don't actually want to do this. If you think about what a dungeon does, like, sure, once you get to the really high level, some of them are, are like, have some powerful modes, but most of the modes are, like, scry one, gain a life, make a one one. You're paying five mana and tapping one of your creatures to get, like, a half a mana worth of a spell on a colorless land that comes into play. Tap the amount of restrictions on, on this. Uh, at sorcery speed. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I can't scry one at instant speed. That would, that would be busted. Like, I don't even think anyone plays this in dungeon decks. Like, if any deck was going to want it, it would be a dungeon deck. And commanders built around legends. You got a legend in your command zone. And still, I don't think anyone even considers playing this card. So I have this in my in my dungeon deck, and I've had it on the battlefield, and I've never activated it ever. <laughs> like 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 you're just basically taking off your whole turn to do like what Seth said, something meaningless. Uh, so yeah, it's just like an ETB tapped colorless land, and you're like, why am I playing this? But it has the dungeon word on it, so you might as well <laughs> throw it in your Flavor. deck. So if so this, let's. Oh, go ahead, Grim. If this had costed no mana and didn't require you to tap a legendary, would it be good? Just tap yeah. venture, yeah. Just tap it. Adventure. Tap venture would be good. Yeah, yes. that would be yes. good. Yeah, that would be really good. Even if it was tap and like paying a mana or two to venture, it would probably still be okay. So I, I think the alchemy version is playable in commander. Like one mana, that, tap it to the venture. Alchemy version sounds yes. sick. I would, I would jam that. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Sorcery. It, it, no, I, it, it's. I think that the alchemy version still bad. Like if if it, the sorcery speed, come on. Not Come everybody's on. draw go, Krim, but, but, right? you're, but you're already playing a dungeon deck, and it'd be one of your yeah. better cards, right? You may question why you're playing a dungeon deck, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you, the Cephas is a fairly popular commander, I. but yeah, this card wouldn't make the cut unless you're like super... If you have to put every single card that refers to dungeons in the deck, then sure. But that would be like the lowest one. Like a lot of the commons that are like, it gets plus one plus one. If you completed a dungeon, like those are better than this. <laughs> I mean, you'd rather you'd really play basic land, right? Like if it came down to it, yeah, I think 100. the basic land is like strictly better than this. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, like compare it to like Flavor. War Room. <laughs> War Room enters the battlefield untapped, taps are colorless, and then you can pay three mana and tap it to uh, draw a card. And you lose life equal to the number of colors you're running. That's like like comparing that to this, where it's like you pay four mana and tap it, and you have to tap a legendary creature, and then you get like a one one, or you get like a gold token or something like that. Oh my god, Wizards must it's, have it's really been worried so, about dungeons. So, so all these bad cards are like literally like fifteen years old. This one's like you know, last last, <laughs> last year, last week. Yeah, you gotta wait for Return to Forgotten Realms, <laughs> where they, they, they fix dungeons, and this becomes like the greatest card of all yeah. time. I, I think they were just scared of, of dungeons. Maybe they thought, maybe they, like, maybe they were thinking about like energy in the back of their mind, where it's like, well, maybe we, we're, I, maybe that we had screwed to up the, the balance. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, right. when they, they announced dungeons, I was scared of dungeons when they announced the mechanic, but then all the cards were really bad, so <laughs> it bad. didn't matter. Also, the wait, can you really return to a Forgotten Realm? <laughs> Like remember that, remember <laughs> realm. <laughs> yeah, like that is a remembered realm, right? So, oh, <laughs> uh, all right. Moving on, uh, Richard. What do we got next? Uh, I don't know. We have security detail. It's an enchantment. Uh, three in a white, Mercadian masks. Uh, white, white. The activated ability. Put a one-one white soldier creature token into play. Play this ability only if you control no creatures and only once each turn. 
It's not that bad. <laughs> what? <laughs> only if you have no creatures. And the only, only ones you have all the skull clamps that can go down. You can't. Oh my god, skull clamps. So, if you have, but you can only do it once. Wait, so, so what, what's the good so one? Like mobilization? How mobi- much does that yeah. cost? Yeah. Mobilization yeah. Is, three mana. is three mana and three to activate. But it also gives your soldiers vigilance. Okay. And, and it's I, also is not it, a good card. Not, but, it's, but it's way better than this. not once per turn, yeah. right? No, 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 you can do, you can do it as many times as... Yeah, you yeah. can dump your mana into this at instant speed. Yeah, this is once per turn. I mean, so it it does... I don't know. It makes soldiers. You could put it in a soldier deck. What about a token deck, maybe? It's just, you Would need you... so much to go right for it to do anything. Because you got to have zero creatures. Like, that's a hard part. Like, right. what kind of deck that would want this is also going to have zero creatures? It's not even a good mana sync, though. Because if you have, like, a bajillion <laughs> mana, you can slowly activate it once one, per turn. One. Okay, <laughs> what, what about that card that Krim plays? When a creature ETBs, you kill all creatures of the same color? Oh, okay. Uh, plague, okay. Uh, like so, spreading plague. So you security detail spreading plague and something to make all creatures white, <laughs> and then this is your new lock piece. Oh, you. Oh, what about you, Mycosynth Lattice? So they're all colors on the battlefield, and Ooh. then you, you put that thing on, and then you Vandal yeah, Blast yeah. them. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I mean, would okay. mobilization still just be better? <laughs> Yeah, mobilization is still them. better every I mean, step clearly mobilization is just powercraft version of this, but I, <laughs> this is like not horrendous. Like, you can still do something with it, no? Skull Clamp, yeah. Skull Clamp is the answer to everything. It's uh, playable. It doesn't actively sabotage you like Sora's path. But like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so bad at what it does. Like, I, sure, I you could like play five it. Five years but... ago on Commander Clash, I would actually play this not ironically. <laughs> oh, like, I remember the times deck. where this would like might actually be useful. Like, it's 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 rare to say mobilization is a, a power craft whatever. <laughs> like, like Heliod, I guess is similar, right? Heliod is what four to activate. Or to activate sacred yeah. sacred mesa three man enchantment yep. pay two to make a one one pegasus with flying but at the beginning of your upkeep you got to sacrifice a pegasus One of the greatest cards of all time though <laughs> but i mean that's like just like a better version too there's so many better versions of this card like even if you want the effect it's hard for me to imagine adding redundancy, this one to the deck Seth, redundancy uh, what if they surgically extract your <laughs> <laughs> their what your one copy of whatever that other was <laughs> <sighs> Mm-hmm. Are you, right. you not thinking else? Just skull clamp is the answer to this. Yeah. The, the, so essentially, you just get a free skull clamp, and actually, it's not even true because if you play a creature, you don't anymore. So yeah. Uh, yeah. This card. This is probably the worst one on the oh, list. No. We, we don't wait. have any good answers. Oh, wait till it. we get. Wait till we get to our next card, Tomer. The next card is way worse than security detail. All right. <laughs> Are you ready? What is? <laughs> what is the next also one? Expensive. Next up is a North star this is a antiquities artifact it is four mana you can pay for and tap it and it says you may cast one spell this turn by paying its casting cost with any type of mana for example two and two green becomes four generic mana however the card still retains its original color this ability is played as an interrupt so you can do it anytime so essentially for the low low cost of four mana you can cast one spell as though it was colorless this turn rather than paying its colors so it fixes it fixes your mana your tiamat yes you got to pay a four mana tax but suddenly your tiamat is seven generic mana rather than needing all five colors to get in there or your ur dragon or whatever so uh wait is this chromatic this card's, lantern this gas <laughs> Hold this on. is a chromatic lantern number two. Yeah, it's this four, is legit gas. But you don't get you don't get a discount though. You don't get any discount on your spell. Like you're paying four extra mana just to turn something colorless. <laughs> a five color staple. That, okay, <laughs> this is probably the best thing that's been main like named so far. So you know, right, you get you infinite kidding. colorless mana quite easily in Commander, but then you need to find some way to filter it into like actual mana to finish. Yeah, like this when is I it. mana drain, you already have I'm infinite stuck. mana. Who cares about this eight mana, right? And you use it to but cast it's only for your one spell. spell. Yeah, yeah. But you, sure. Finish only has for to be one, one spell. spell and exactly one spell. The, the, if it was card, all, if it was fixing for the entire turn, that'd be busted. So I, I this can card is this. gas. Hold on, this is not that bad compared to like everything. This is probably the best card it has that a we've named. I don't know. No, it no, no, it doesn't. Y'all are wrong. Y'all be tripping. No, this is no. good. I, I, dude, hold on. This is like unironically like better than everything else we've met. This is like legit playable. 
I feel like you're all trolling me. On it too? No, <laughs> no troll. Like, it's four extra mana. Your one drop costs five. Your two drop costs six. There's right, no what, way what, that what five can color be deck would you not run this in, Seth? <laughs> <laughs> I play more totally five color decks than anyone, and I would not play this in any five color deck. I, Richard's theory does make a bit of sense. Like, okay, you make infinite colored mana and then use this to cast your finisher, but there's just like better ways to do that i think like is there? What gemstone is the, the gemstone lantern. array gemstone array is four mana you can pay two mana put a charge counter on it and then remove the charge counter to make a man of any color so it's uh, kind of the same thing but actually does things outside of just taxing all your spells if you want to turn and it works for all your spells rather than just one spell and it doesn't cost 114 dollars for some reason like north star so oh. i was curious to see what ED, uh, what people on edh rec uh, run this along sign. So they listed five cards as high synergy. The top one you see is Chimney Imp. <laughs> chimney Imp. <laughs> it's 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 a a word of command. It's like troll. It's like a troll deck. It's people that just try to build the worst cards in magic. Dot deck. Except it's gotta be. Yeah. <laughs> and also, it's worth mentioning there are, according to EDH Rec, almost a, a million decks, I think, on EDH Rec, 988,000. 13. 13 of them <laughs> playing this for is a, This is a $115 card set. This is two it's, it's a budget, for, it's a budget yeah. thing. If this were more yeah. accessible, everyone would play it. The Imagine real question if you is... reprinted it to a dollar card. Can you can you play it in, a, in any color of deck, or do those green mana symbols mean it has to be in mono green? It has to be mono green, right? Well, oh, wait, no, no, the that's Oracle reminder text, text actually removed that's it. That's reminder, yeah. Uh, that's reminder text. Oh, that's old school yeah. reminder text. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So you could play this anywhere. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure that, this which is makes it so much better. Which deck editor? Because <laughs> nope. it's reminder text. It doesn't appear in brackets. Well, no, the Oracle text <laughs> is the is the the official text. And if you look at the oh, Oracle text, yeah, yeah, it yeah, doesn't yeah. have any green, green symbols. So you're good. You may spend yeah. mana as though we're mana of any type to pay that spell's mana cost. This is a fixing the mono white needed, what about, honestly. Okay, I know this makes it 11 mana, but what about your ultimatum deck, Seth? You remember that? <laughs> why why if, not just play a world tree or play a chromatic lantern or if, some other... What if, those get, okay, what if those get blown up? <laughs> what if this gets blown up? I don't want to spend 11 on my ultimatum. <laughs> that sounds so expensive. Seth, Seth you just said it. You just key. gave every reason for people to look at this and laugh and not even blow it up. Like, if you play this, I wouldn't think, oh, Seth's mana is incorrect and he needs to cast some, like, Christmas land spell. No. <laughs> I, uh, if you like, play this, I, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> and probably not kill you. Maybe that's its value. Like, you play this and everyone's like, oh, I don't want to kill that person. They obviously have no idea what they're doing. Look, look at those horrible cards. You, you play five color Blood Moon. Ooh. And, like, since you're playing five color, no one will see it coming. So you Blood okay. Moon everyone, including yourself. And then you use North Star to get yourself out from under Blood Moon. Yeah, I like you really need that. a second chromatic lantern. That's pretty good. Like, this guy has behind. eight triumphs. There's no way he's playing Blood Moon. I'm not going to fetch a basic, huh? Surprise. <laughs> and then the yeah. monocolor deck steamroll. Dude, <laughs> that's so sick, dude. Are you kidding me? That works. You know what? All you know right. what the viewers gonna ask? The viewers gonna ask for a commander clash where we play these cards. We each gotta we build can, on one of by them. The yep. way. They're not available. Yeah. North Star isn't? <laughs> oh. Moto Moto is one step ahead. They're like these these powerful <laughs> cards can't see the light of day. They're too strong. You know what's bad? Oh, the Moto team is like, no one's gonna play this. We're, <laughs> not it. We're not putting it on the client. <laughs> Why won't somebody spend their hard dev hours adding this garbage? <laughs> Card. All right. Well, well. Speaking about cards that uh, aren't available on the client, this is actually a card that I feel like Krim would run. Uh, take it away, Krim. What's the next one on our list? All right. So it's Reality Twist. <laughs> it is blue, blue, blue. Cumulative upkeep. One blue, blue. <laughs> Instead of their normal mana, planes produce red, swamps produce <laughs> green, mountains produce white, and forests produce swamp. <laughs> Hell yeah, I would run this card. Are you joking me? Why are you laughing? This card is the truth. Are you? This card is the truth. Oh my god, how much is this? I need to add this to my deck. Hold it's, on. It's only $3, despite it's the other $3. reserve It's $3. I am overnighting this. 
This is getting ordered wait, 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 right so now. So um, upkeep, right? So you play blue, blue, one, and during your next turn, you got to play blue, 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 one, one. Is yes. that correct? So the, the next, your yep. next turn, you only have to pay three, and then the, on the one after that, you have to pay six. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So it's like three, yeah. six, nine, but like pure blue. Yeah, oh, you which need is, so much which blue. Is, I just, oh, it actually, actually, it doesn't affect islands, so you're good. Right. I just yeah. ended yeah. a ton yeah. of turns, right? Like, I just ended like two turns. It's a one-sided stacks piece, right? Like, Dude, if you're on mono blue, you're yeah, like, I'm sure you're stacking yourself by <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> No, no, no. I imagine so it, high. Super Friends. In Super Friends, I would play this. But the upkeep is so high. And the other thing is it doesn't actually, like, stop people from casting their spells. It just messes with their colors. So it doesn't necessarily mean that your opponents won't be able to cast things. Like, so if, you, if your opponent's a five-color deck or a three-color deck, they might be able to function just fine and be like, oh, whatever. Like, I'll just tap myself for other colors. I don't know about that. I don't what know. What about trials? About like, How do they work with this? Like, is it the last type? <laughs> okay, so I think it's whatever you... Maybe you choose. Yeah, right? I don't think you choose. I think, I think, oh. I think the last thing in this order here, whichever type matches you get, no? Well, well if weird. you have, well, let's say you have like a, you have a breeding pool, which is an island, or sorry, no, uh, not that forest, one. Right? Uh, the godless shrine, which is a white, yeah. it's a, it's a mountain, or sorry, it's a, it's a plains and it's a swamp. So I think it's going to be a dual land. For, would it not tap for red and green? I would, I would assume think, that that is how it would work. I think green because it's the last thing on this. <laughs> <laughs> I turned your 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 <laughs> goblin shrine well, into a stomping grounds. Are you I kidding me? That's, so confused about that's this. I'm actually not sure. It it's also fun. it also only works with lands with types too. So like the battle yeah, yeah. bond lands, the new Innistrad lands. So you're only hitting like some percentage of your opponent's mana to start with. I mean, the deal breakers, the upkeep of three a turn. Like that means unless you're playing like Solemnity or some shenanigans to get around that, it's going to be really hard to keep it on the battlefield I have the for ideal more than deck. like a turn I have or two. the ideal deck. But first I want to say the errata is they have a, they have, they have a, not errata, the rulings. Yeah. If the land has more than one basic land type, tapping the land for mana can choose between uh, oh, to produce choose. mana by the color. So it's like so. a dual land, yeah. Oh, so this yeah. is useless then. But okay. well, I, I, there was one deck. There was one deck that Seth recently played that is, it's the per, it's, it's maybe a staple. <laughs> Dare I say a staple. Uh, Chuse, a Heart of Oceans. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice you say unless you remove a counter from a permanent you control. So you can remove the age counter from reality twist every single turn and always just have to pay three, which is not the worst. Can't, can't I hex parasite this too? Yeah. Hmm. They're age counters, so they're just counters. If you have a way of removing oh the counters, oh my god, dude, this card but, is gas, this card dude. Is insane, but but this is three dollars. Okay. That god comes out of commander clash right now. <laughs> no, seriously, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not available online, so we can't we can't play. But like honestly, if you have a Chusei deck, and I know there's how many there's 144 decks on EDH rec out of nine million, so there are people out there. Yo, one there, of them's there, listening there, right people? now. 144 decks. 144 very cultured people. They, they enjoy the finer <laughs> things in life. I like 0.015% of all decks on EDH rack. So if you're one of those 0.015% of players, uh, Reality Twist is $3. It's a steal. No joke. I'm not memeing. It's a good card in Chisei. I got to ask the question again, though. Like, this would be a five color card, right? That's got to be. Like, can you even play it in Cheesy? Because that definitely has oh, mana no, symbols, right. and I don't think it's reminder text. Oh, no! So I think you can only play it in five color, maybe? Oh, you're right! Wait, oh. but, but that's Five fine. color super friends. You're yeah, good. five color you're good, super Grim. friends, or I, I have my five color hate cards deck, where it's like Kenrith, <laughs> and it plays Contamination Blood Moon, and it actually does purposely just hate itself out. But the point is that it's funny, and it trolls itself and everybody. <laughs> so so what this is card... This card is playable. What if you're five color mono blue hidden Chisei commander? Yeah, there you <laughs> yeah. go. There you go. That's <laughs> you tutor up Chisei. You tutor up reality twist. You got him. You got him. Like, uh, I only have battle bond lands. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is a build around, legitimately. Art, There's also if your is fire. Look at this. It's literally like five D chess. It's like checkers yeah. turned into chess or something. <laughs> If, oh my if god, you're gonna, nice expressionist piece. If you're going to build around it, there's also uh, Naked Singularity, 
essentially the same exact card, but a five mana <laughs> artifact. So, oh, Crim's already well, on top I, of that I, one. I got that one. <laughs> Come on. Right. These are this is a three dollar reserve list card. You better snap this up. Yeah, yeah, I, I, this is in Cheesy my players. cart as we film this. By the way, like I, it is in my cart. Is this becoming like an MTG finance spot? Card like, Kingdom these garbage is getting cards are my three dollars right now. <laughs> Look, this is one of those unique, powerful effects they'll never print again. So, <laughs> you know, you gotta watch those reserve list spikes. Do we have to do a disclaimer? <laughs> hashtag not financial advice. Or not financial advice. <laughs> yeah. not financial well, advice. it's only played in five colors, so it's not like they <laughs> like it's gonna pop off. <laughs> hashtag these cards are actually trash. Don't listen to them. <laughs> This but maybe cracked. this card's cracked. <laughs> Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. This card is cracked. <laughs> All right, here's we're moving on to another card that may or may not be as good. Uh, I've never read this card in my life, but here it goes. This is Pale Moon. Uh, it's an a blue instant. It costs one and a blue until end of turn. If a player taps a non basic land for mana, it produces colorless instead of any other type. <laughs> so it's an instant speed blood moon effect. Yo, this is gas. For Not one bad. turn. Well, why is it on this list? It's like a silence. You, yeah, like if you do this on <laughs> your upkeep. It's not a silence, though. If it's on your upkeep, then I don't really stuff. care. <laughs> they still, your opponent can still cast stuff. And what it only hits their non basics. And it doesn't stop their mana rocks. It like I slightly really annoys so someone better. for one for one turn. Like you, it kind of like slightly annoys someone. Yeah. I, I, I mean, like, it's cheap reality. enough that you can put it under Isochron Scepter. And just slightly annoy someone every turn. Or you can put literally silence under an icicle scepter. That will get you actually, killed. This one, everyone will just yeah, leave you alone. Yeah, this is just funny. Right? Like, <laughs> will they? It's 35 cents, dude. I Look, this is empty. I am getting deals right now. Crim's, right Crim's right now. buying all these cards. All right, you, you I, have yeah. a lot of Eldrazi in your deck, but you didn't draw any of your wastes. Oh, so there you go. you pale moon yourself. I, I want you to know, with Reality Twist and Pale Moon in my cart, it is three dollars <laughs> and fourteen but, cents after well, tax. But what if what if the person that you cast this on also has North Star? They're just like, eh, <laughs> no, no big, <laughs> no big deal. North Star, we I found it. North Star is the, North Star. the hoser yeah, but, for the Pale Moon meta. <laughs> Again, the only reason why people aren't playing North Star because it would be in every commander deck is that people are priced out of it. Yeah, this one that's, is luckily that's... only fifty cents, and it's not on the reserve list, so. Okay, what yeah. if your whole group was all playing mono black and they all had like Orborg coffers all the time? Would okay. you put this as a meta call? No. <laughs> you just play strip mine instead. Yes. I would just play strip mine or whatever. Like <laughs> what if they high tide? They're like all dirty high tide combo players. And they high tide and you're like in response, I pale moon you. <laughs> I don't even know I, that I, works. I, what does high tide even say? Does it yeah, I'm looking it up mana? now. I'm not sure if it, it might still make double mana. I don't mana. think high tide. Like they, oh, I don't think they wow. care. No, that would it actually be bad. Type. They would still get the blue mana. Yeah, they yeah. would make one yeah. colorless and one blue for every land. Yeah, so <laughs> pretty decent. So you help them out by a lot. I can you, can, I cannot Tober, think of any way. Can we put this in Moonful Tribal? Can we make a moon deck out of this? Oh, <laughs> flavor. I mean, flavor okay. Well, it mentions the moon. So if you really want to be as flavorful as possible, you'll put it in just for the flavor, I guess. But I don't know. Reality twist seems like the the truth. Somebody Reality believes in this card, is the though. Truth. Somebody believes in this card because the foil version, the, the regular version, of fifty cents. The foil version's fifty one dollars. So somebody last year decided, you know what, this one is <laughs> is uh, has potential. So they bought out the foils and they spiked it from like six dollars to a hundred, and it went down to fifty-one. Looking, I, I hope I hope your investment pays off. Whoever bought that out, uh, <laughs> looking seems a little suspect, but they're cornering the market. Okay, like when when you come crawling back and you're like, dude, I just wish I had some pale moons they know, in multiples. If, <laughs> they know something we don't. Maybe in another year from now, there's going to be like something that just breaks pale moon. <laughs> like, looking at EDH rec, uh, it, it's in a in a few decks and. Uh, all the cards that are listed are moon cards. Alpine moon, blood moon, nice. bad moon. So nice. it's just like moon, tri moon That's tribal not a players. That's denial deck set. That's not a moon deck. Ninja of the new <laughs> yeah, moon, blood moon. Imprisoned in the moon. Kami of the waning moon. That just sounds like you're getting stacked. I don't know if that's a bad, like that's a moon deck. <laughs> Chaos moon. Yeah, it seems like a, a, a deck. 
All right, moving on. Uh, this card is one of my favorites. Uh, Richard, what is, what, what's this all, all right. about? We have Apocalypse Chime from Homelands. A two mana artifact. You pay two, you tap it, you sacrifice it to bury all cards from the Homelands expansion. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, those God. Autumn Willow decks are getting to you. Um, I'm so tired of my pod. Baron, just Baron Singer, you know, they're like, oh my goodness, this, this Baron Singer is out of control. <laughs> How do we counter this? <laughs> oh, the, the idea this is, is good so old funny. Days, the super God, hateful so cards. <laughs> the, problem, <laughs> the problem is that Homelands is so bad. Like, if this was... For a set that people actually played, it could actually be good. But Homelands is just like one of the least powerful sets ever in Magic's history. And the only cards people play from it are like spells, like Memory Labs or Merchant Scrolls. So there's not even permanents. It is funny though. Are there are there lands from Homelands, basic lands? Do they have basic lands in that set? Because it is really funny that you could punish someone for just like choosing a homelands art because they really like it and you're like that's what you get <laughs> armageddon yeah. they, they, no, they probably got bin. from like the bulk bit at yeah, the LCS. There's no like, lands, i got some free there, there's the terrible tri lands from homelands. okay yeah okay <laughs> I, okay okay okay, okay. Obviously, no this card is like in. this card is like unplayable right unless you there was some way that you could turn the text yeah is, is there, there a way you could alter cards where they're the all text? from homelands so i so hmm I don't know, actually. Seth, do you know? I, I feel so, like that's an unset thing. So I don't, I don't believe so. There's cards that change color words. You can change color and card like creature type or something. Yeah, I don't think there's type. one that <laughs> changes the set word. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> at least. <laughs> you know what they should do? They should make something like this. But if it comes from a uh, a commander precon. Oh, that would require some some knowledge to actually play with, but that would be sweet. Like that would actually. Right. What do you think about cards like this? Like obviously this one's bad because it hates on a set that's bad. But could a card like this be? So, so there, there's be only three such cards. Oh, I would have been. Oh, like I, it pulls things from adventure, whatever. Like and it just destroys Eldrain. Oh my God, yes. So you but, you have City in a Bottle, which is Arabian Nights. You have. I don't even know what this is. Golgothian Silix, which is Antiquities. Uh, and then, but they're all slightly different. Like, one of them is, like, you discard from play, which is destroy. One is, like, you can't cast any other spells from the set. Um, and then Apocalypse Chime. So only the three, like, really old expansions. They should bring back some, for Commander, some expansion hate. That would be kind of cool. Destroy all cards that were printed in 2022 or uh, 2020. Yeah, year hate would be awesome. Yeah, year, year hate would be hilarious. I think staple wise, <laughs> we're all spread across like very many sets. I don't know if you can actually name a set to meaningfully do anything. Yeah, no. and it's usually precons. If there was like if there was a version of this that hit all cards that were printed in a precon, that would be good. What if what if it were uh, Dronith Magistrate of just commander like the year 2021 you can't play what? cards from this oh. year oh. yeah <laughs> okay what about it's like an unset card what about actually building around this card we're thinking about it as a hate card this card's pretty cheap like it's two to cast two to activate and you make everyone sacrifice all their homeland stuff can you build like homelands aristocrats or something where blowing up like play a bunch of blood <laughs> artists and then all your creatures are like <laughs> our homelands creatures okay, and then you crack aristocrats this and like pervaded homelands let's see okay so there's Thrones. actually one i'm going to there's I'm going one to aristocrat up. card okay the, the cease play got reprinted a lot it's uh send your autocrat uh, when it enters the battlefield, Ooh. you create three zero one one black surf creature tokens. And when it leaves the battlefield, you exile all surf tokens. This card is actually not bad in Aristocrats, and it got reprinted a few times because it was one of the few cards in Homelands that was good. Ish. That could work. Otherwise, you're you playing build cards around like <laughs> what? Black Carriage? Yeah, Homelands. Oh my god, the cards are so bad. It's insane. If, if there were basic lands in Homelands, <laughs> this opens the opportunity games. for all kinds of green <laughs> shenanigans, but there are not. So, yeah, I was going to say, like, you could build a Zedru deck or like a Blim deck where you give your opponents your crappy Homelands <laughs> cards and you exchange it for your own stuff. Like, there's some love, there's like the Belkin Plotter where you like exchange your land with an opponent's land. But there's no basics, so you have to run like the bad homelands, <laughs> the garbage lands. 
to, to cast your your these garbage spells, and then you have to donate them to your opponents, and then you get them a box this time. So You're bad. gonna piss off the one Minotaur player, though. <laughs> oh, did you reduce from here? Yo, there's some pretty what good did you No. <laughs> Good I'm actually cards. sorted by the most played Homelands cards. Did you know there's a propaganda in black in Homelands? Yeah, Koskin Falls. It's like four mana. During your upkeep, you have to tap an untapped creature and then to otherwise bury it. Otherwise, it's like literally propaganda. Wait, that you control or just in general? You control. You control. Oh. But then it's a propaganda. Dude, I, thought that they, I was going to say that thing is cracked if you can un, like you can tap anything. <laughs> tap your opponent's stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, actually it not looks bad. grim. For permanence, you got send your autocrat Koskin Falls, and you have like the popper cards to read it arrows and they're going to like spectral bears like oh my dwarves <laughs> there's dwarven traitors <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> do you know there's a rogue in the set <laughs> Is there really? it's four yeah it's a it's uh veldrain of sangir one black black it gets minus three minus zero gains forest walk though until end of turn and it's a five five boom <laughs> two five take a dump on the green player nice <laughs> That could actually be pretty good on our list. <laughs> yeah, it's almost deserving Compared to of our a slot. list, that, that's looking a little too power crept. <laughs> I don't know. Reality, yeah. Well, I don't reality, know. reality twists is the truth. Get off this list. This is, yeah, like reality twists is the truth. No meme. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, what are we on? Uh, Seth, what, what you got for us? Uh, next up, we are heading to Invasion for a, a Lotus. Traditionally, Magic Lotus cards have been very powerful, but uh, this one, Lotus Guardian, not so much. Seven mana, four, four flying, with the ability to tap to add a mana of any color. Just exactly what you want out of your uh, seven drop finisher, the ability to tap to add a single mana Birds of Paradise style. This card's just bad in every way. Like, uh, Birds of Paradise effects are good, but you don't want to spend seven mana on that. Like, they're pretty useless on turn seven, like getting from, you know, seven mana, nine mana, or whatever. And then if you just want a big flyer, this is a seven mana four four. There's so many better, bigger things that you can play. So I think this card, I don't know. I, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know where you bad. would ever play this. Really? <laughs> where, where would you play this, Grim? I would play this in a Dark Confidant, Dark Tutelage deck. Right, so you can take what? as much damage as possible when you reveal yep. it, <laughs> and then I and then I uh, uh, turn on your death shadows, repay in kind, pay in the death okay. shadow and commander. Okay, okay, so it's it's good at helping you kill yourself, basically. Right, right, it, <laughs> yes, and and you know, let's say I've drawn it. Okay, well, I can't reveal it anymore. Well, I can play it. You you ever, dude? I've I've lost to a seven mana like four four flyer. Okay. Yeah. Uh like this, this was this a limited a, bomb in 2015, okay? Like this is a limited bomb. It's flight. still seven mana. I mean, it's a four four flyer. It's a four so four it flyer. It, it can get work done. It's a dragon. <sighs> yeah. Um, it's any been reason to, to ever put this in a dragon deck? No. <laughs> Other than its type, probably not. But the, but legitimately, that's the only use I could see for it. <laughs> I should really add three mana of any color. <laughs> yeah. Would that be playable? It, yeah. Would you even play it at this though? Seven mana? I think if it, if it tapped not. for three, I would probably run it because there's probably combo potential at that point. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah, there might be combos yeah. if you could untap it with something, but with as three, it is. For three mana, but for one mana, I don't know if there's any combos that oh, are do you realistic see the text? It says Lotus Fields are too valuable to leave undefended, so you need to play some Lotus Field decks. Yeah. That's how it gets played, <laughs> flavor. It's it's so the top commander that it's getting run in, out of eighty three decks, uh, ten percent of them put them in Demon Lord Bells and Lock. Ooh, because oh, that's that's probably like combo builds where going. Yeah. everything has to cost four or more. Yeah, so it has to, everything has to cost four or more because you don't want to cast any of the cards in your deck. You just want to draw <laughs> your entire deck and then win. See, so, so good if you don't plan on actually playing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what the yes. problem is very good. The art, it's a skeleton. It does That's look fine. skeletal. The art's actually pretty cool, by the way. But the like, skeleton I, I aspect that. overtook the dragon aspect, and we got this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an artifact creature, so it's be like a construct, right? It's a this dragon. is, this it's is a dragon. Bone Dragon's but it's an uh, great ancestor. Creature. I demand I demand construct as part of its errata. In like, I don't uh, think they've looked at this card in a long time, Tomer. They're probably not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you can back it to artifact. I mean, it is an yeah, artifact. Could, like Mycosin, you could deal Golem, more damage, get the cost theory. lower. Affinity in the play. Tokens from Urza Saga. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think anytime I'm playing, if this is in a deck, I'm never trying to cast it. So <laughs> let's let's be honest here. It doesn't matter I, what you I, bring I've up. cast worse creatures in this. This one actually adds mana. <laughs> Richard, please. <laughs> Richard, please. <laughs> but do you really want to tap your seven? It, drop it gets for you to one that mana. nice mana you need for Blessed Wind, okay? <laughs> You're right. You're right. You get, I don't know why I'm not wow. playing Ornithopter of Paradise, but oh my god, you're right. Yeah, you, you can cast it through Reality Twist. Doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. this card's busted. I think I think artifacts kind of just solve that on their own. And mana fixes <laughs> if you get Blood Moon, like too good. <laughs> I, I believe right now y'all are blocking flyers. You're reaching right now. You're blocking flyers. All right, this one this one was a card. Uh, this one has some nostalgic uh, value to it, though. Krim, tell us about the next artifact on our list. <laughs> All right, so the next card is Aladdin's Ring. Eight mana. <laughs> artifact. And then you could tap it, and or you tap eight, or you pay eight, and then tap it. You deal four damage, target creature or player. Eight mana. You are just Boros Charming every turn cycle <laughs> i mean it can this hit is... anything so that's that's good I... was this card playable back in the day i feel like no <laughs> i can't Who imagine 16 so... mana? <laughs> i feel like i put this in a deck at some point when i was like five <laughs> okay it... but this is actually playable as a, an, a finisher in an <laughs> artifact deck that can untap it and get infinite mana basalt monolith you know, mm-hmm. and then and you just untap it forever. You just hit everybody for four damage every day. I what mean, if, what if you're in mono green ramp and you need creature removal? <laughs> There's I'm sure there, if only there were <laughs> some way to times. remove creatures in mono green that just <laughs> green doesn't have any ways of dealing with creatures. I mean, green used to didn't have. Oh, that's any true. Ways, right? That's true. That's true. Totally. <laughs> you could actually, play totally. This. If yeah. Paradox Engine was still a thing, that could actually like finish the game. I well, think no. you can make enough mana Isochron with Paradox Scepter, Engine the... that you could tap and untap and actually burn out the table. I think that would be Scepter. possible. The, the Wa- dramatic Walking reversal Ballista ruined all these cards. <laughs> Where you're like, if you have infinite mana, I can finish the game. But I'm like, why don't you just play Walking? <laughs> but <Ballista>? redundancy. <laughs> what if I? What if I? I? I Praetor's grasps your your Ballista. <laughs> <laughs> See, so Ballista two, yeah, it's like a steep drop off when you look at it, but like Ballista two here, huh? It's so you, you put this so in your deck, Richard. Come on, you come on, Richard. You, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna argue for the other cards. Or you're gonna take a dump on this one. Come on, Richard. <laughs> this one, this one is it, tough. It's so much bad. It's sixteen. It's so eight, like in, sixteen for four thing? damage. Sixteen what if for you're playing four. Aladdin as your commander, would you run Aladdin's ring? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> what? Maybe and hope I discard it to gamble. I guess <laughs> the, the best case like is you, you animate this it. and hit someone with play, you know, like turn it on with Karn. Yeah, Karn. yeah, something yeah, like that. Something hit him freight. That could that could work. That could work. Even then, is really sad. But, like the, the thing is, like if someone monolith. gives you this. And doesn't remove it. And every turn you activate, it doesn't get any better, right? It's like 24 mana, 8 damage. <laughs> 32 <laughs> mana, 12. It doesn't get better at any point. Oh, it's just horrendous. Seedborn Muse? You Seedborn Muse, and you could do this every single person's turn. Yeah? Yeah. When you have 8 mana on the battlefield. field. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's still only 4 damage, seed board, though. You it's not even like... The table. <laughs> Then they don't There's, kill They have it. a 5-5. Five, five. Your plan is foiled. It regenerates every turn. It's like, <laughs> the, dude, the, skeleton stonewall this. Loses to rocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I tried. I put it in Aladdin, though. I don't care. Basalt model uh, deck. Just saying. Still stand by it. Uh, Next up, is it me? I think it's me. Uh, Next up, we have a card that... I feel it doesn't deserve to be here because I've I've already seen its power in uh, Commander Clash. It's it's seared into my brain. Uh, this is Divine Intervention. Uh, also reserveless. Also a very old card. Expensive. Uh, probably why nobody plays it. It's a white enchantment. A lot of white cards here. Uh, white enchantment. Six and double white. Uh, for an enchantment that enters the battlefield with two intervention counters on it. 
Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you remove an intervention counter from Divine Intervention. When you remove the last intervention counter from Divine Intervention, the game is a draw. So you don't win the game. Everybody wins the game, kind of. Uh, this makes people irrationally very upset uh, if you actually pull this off. But it also makes people irrationally happy. Uh, so it really depends where you are on the spectrum here. Um, I've So this card legitimately actually won, in quotes, uh, drew the game on a Commander Clash. I don't remember the episode. It was one of the very first ones ever. It was ago. like six years ago. <laughs> but like we did play it, and it did actually pop off. Uh, it I doesn't remember. win the game. It draws. It I is remember. kind of a win. I, I remember doing a lot of begging. I was the one with the divine intervention, and there was a lot of begging of, like, please don't kill me, and it, it kind of worked. Although there's actual combos for this card, like Vampire Hex Mage. There's a card called Dust of Moments that removes two counters from a permanent that's a white card. So there's ways that you can set this up where you just, like, play it and immediately draw the game. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it deserves to be on the list of worst cards ever. Obviously, it's eight mana, but I don't know. Drawing the game's... A nice option to have like drawing is better than losing right it's like, a combo <laughs> where you win. lose the game for yourself like what <laughs> like, you prevent yourself from losing like, it. In like the best case scenario you just drew the game like i don't understand like why would you want to do this <laughs> but what if well, someone's attacking you place. for lethal like uh, if someone's attacking you for lethal wouldn't it be better to remove the counters and get a draw than to have to say yeah. you know whatever next week Maybe you should use a two card combo to wow. prevent yourself from dying <laughs> <laughs> hmm. it's basically splinter twin <laughs> I, I agree with Seth I agree this is pretty much commander splinter twin <laughs> Mm. I, I just like it because of the, re the the intense, angry reactions that very few people have against it. Like, some people get so mad that you would draw the game instead of try to win it. So I think for that alone, it's worth adding it just at least once to troll a little bit. Because it's like, oh, yeah. you drew the game. It's not it's not anything terrible. But, like, some people really hate you if you do that. And, like, that's No one lost, though. Why would they be upset? No one lost. It's almost like a win. It's almost yeah. like everybody wins. You know when you go to Command Fest and they have like the EDH tournaments? What happens when you draw? Oh. <laughs> Dude, do anything happen? Do you start like flipping? I, I have like, no idea. CMC <laughs> off the top of your deck? Well, that's, that's a random manner. You're not allowed to do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, how do you. This, what happens? In you've a you've ID'd. You've ID'd. I don't know. This is, and everyone signed the slip. So, <laughs> well, at least you signed it for them. <laughs> I think this card is actually probably pretty popular, though, no? I think people play it with the sole intent of just drawing the game. Just, I think it's so expensive. It's $245. Wait, I think what? that keeps it. What? <laughs> reserve list. Reserve list. Always. Yeah, I think that, that keeps it in check. Let's see how many decks run it. Uh, I, I feel this is a card decks. Wizards would print again. <laughs> it's no. like ahead of its time. I don't know if we'll ever get a draw the game card again. I would be surprised if that text is ever on a card again. It's a little BM. I because don't think some people, people would get mad about it. That. Yeah, I, I think it's hilarious. Why is it BM? We're all winners. <laughs> yeah, I know, well, but like, not really. we, we beat the game. Not, they wanted, like they wanted us to kill each other like savages, but here I am. I uplifted you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's We're a legit champions. way to to end it for a group hug, and that's where people run it. Like the top commanders are Angus McKenzie, Feldegriff, Kaneos and Tyro, Quain. Grand Arbiter Augustine. Okay, the last one, not so much. But the, the first four is uh, Group Hug. Is there any way to gift your opponent a game? Somehow like, you draw it and then like kill yourself? <laughs> like, can, can you do this in some manner? Can as you, soon like, as you die, this, this ability goes off the stack, right? Yeah, I don't think there's yeah. a way you could do it. Not that I can think of. That would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, you put this on the stack and then in response you kill yourself and then your opponent's the last one standing. <laughs> I don't think I there's am, any I cards that chuckling. interact with draw. Like, there's lose and win. Those are cards you can interact with, but, like, not draw. I am dying at the thought of someone playing this in Grand Arbiter. That's hilarious. <laughs> After, like, a 10 turn... Well, it makes sense, right? Because if you st if you prevent your opponents from playing the game, then you can, <laughs> you can pop this off pretty easily, right? It's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> Holy hell. <laughs> that would be the maximum salt play, right? You salt them out with stacks, and then you play Divine Intervention so you don't even win. Yeah. You yeah. Just <laughs> <draw>. <laughs> just a, 
really rub Just it lock in. Them in the room with you. How pointless! <laughs> how pointless it was. Yes, where you need to go. <laughs> For my next trick, I'm going to play Shaharazard. Yes, it's fan. I don't care. <laughs> You've essentially Shaharazad at the table, but at a much more BM like range. Oh, you could you could carn them. You Wait, does Shaharazad have a draw trigger on it? What, what happens when you draw the sub game? Does it actually say? Did they plan for this? Does it work? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been banned forever, right? It's been banned since day one. But you could do you could you could reset the game with Karn. Oh, each player who doesn't win the sub game loses half their life rounded up. So is it draw? Ooh. Everyone loses or draw everyone will lose half their life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> we this we figured it out. Broke it. <laughs> this card is legit. All right, we'll move on. Uh, Rich, what we got for us? All right. Um, I know this card, so it can't be that bad. One with nothing. <laughs> A single <laughs> black mana instant. Discard your hand. Huh. Is this, this is a, a combo classic. piece or something? Like I feel people play this legitimately, no? I this feel like this card bad. just I feel like it just got better. I mean it's it's been notoriously bad, but it works really well with containment construct. Like here's what I imagine. You play this in like Prosper, you play containment construct, you discard your entire hand, it all goes to exile. And then you can cast it all thanks to containment construct, and then you make a ton of treasures with Prosper and you just like don't you just like win. Uh, is it containment not... construct only one card? No, containment construct lets you cast all, all of them. This, yeah, this yeah, that's well, a combo. That's know, not bad. But that's but, not that so bad, I guess right? That's okay. So containment construct. Assuming you have your one of right, <laughs> and, that you, and, you're, and that you're finally there, right? <laughs> what is the upside? Of that? <laughs> <laughs> like, why did we do this? Right? Like, we'll <sighs> make a bunch of mana with prosper. You get the cast from exile. So if you have something that cares about casting guards from exile, you kind of actually benefit from it compared to just like doing it for no do, reason for the memes. If they're prosper like a bunch of ornithopters, for free? you go up mana. No, it you only saw- gives you it gives you a treasure when you cast a card from exile. So that sounds busted. Busted. New Even staple. if you have containment construct, that kind of sucks. <laughs> like, that's yeah, that's not very good. Sucks. <laughs> well, okay, so imagine this. Imagine this. You have a handful of like ornithopters, zero drops, mm-hmm. and you have containment construct on the battlefield, and you have prosper. Then you cast one with one of the. You discard all your zero drops. You exile all of them with con- uh, the construct, right? Right, and then and then like you play them with prosper. You're up a treasure. You're up a, netting a mana each time. And maybe like one of those like lines eye diamond or something like that, and then you have underworld breach, and then you win. And then, and then wait, <laughs> sorry, hold on, let, let me get, let me get this again. How do you win? Oh, uh, so you have LED and you have underworld breach. Okay. <laughs> and then you, <laughs> but you've just got a bunch That's of. It, you have breach. You win. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. People just can see it as well. Right? You don't need to demonstrate the cop. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Like, so you have named, like, so essentially my opening hand would be one with nothing, a mana, Ornithopter, Zorn, whatever free artifacts I could, and yeah. an Underworld Breach, right? Oh. Yeah. Hey, what, what, about, what about rack type effects? Are they symmetrical? Or are they just your opponents? Uh, they're just your opponents. Oh, okay. So that's useless. Uh, what about Dredge? What about <laughs> Dredge. Dredge. Uh, the thing is, you got to discard your whole hand. I guess dredge could work. I've seen people be like, "Oh, reanimator," but you don't really want to discard everything. You want to keep your reanimation spell or whatever. Dredge, I guess maybe it would be okay. What about Dam Damia? Damia Sage of Stone, the one that lets you redraw seven yeah. every turn. Like this Wait, turns what? into a wheel essentially. Like you but what? <laughs> cast this on <laughs> your opponent's end step. Well, see, so it's like one mana personal wheel of fortune or something, because it, it draws okay. up to seven Whatever. to make the difference of what you got in your hand. So if you have seven cards in hand, it does nothing. If you got zero cards, you get seven new cards. So on your opponent's end step, you just one with nothing, discard everything, untap seven new cards, off to the races. Eh? Eh? Yeah, you just need your seven drop that's, commander. That's to, actually to better. Stay on that's the a battle. lot better than than the uh, the old prosper plan there. <laughs> Uh, I, I do, I do like that one because you do get to like kind of filter through, right? And just like, okay, well, I don't, I don't like these cards, so we're gonna and it's keep going. Instant speed, so you can leave up all your your counters, Cram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, although I don't know why I want to discard all my counters. <laughs> so like, like, but yeah, 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 I got you, I got you. You can play this in madness. It's a mad. It's a one mana yeah, madness, madness enabler. There, there's things for like the the hellbed cards, right? Like, was it asylum visitor? No. What's the thing where like if you have no Sil- cards? Silent Visitor. 
Oh yeah, yeah, Silent Visitor. Yeah, if you have no cards in hand, I don't know why you would chuck six cards to draw a card, but <laughs> could, could maybe work. maybe you're playing a, a, a what is it a lich deck and you just you realize you're playing a lich deck. Oh, oh, ensnaring bridge. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. there we go. <laughs> Turns on ensnaring bridge. Yeah. There we go. Inferno tutor. Turns that on. They, I guess I need the madness. Destroy stuff. your ensnaring bridge, and then your whole existence was wasted <laughs> for this. <laughs> I feel like this card <laughs> is playable, but it's never good. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> I just, yeah, like I just, that's the thing, right? Like, so like, I, I just feel exactly what Tomer is saying there. Like, I just don't know any, many situations where it's ever like, I want to do this. <laughs> but it's, yeah. only it's one always mana, like, cute. so when you do want to do it, you can do it very efficiently. <laughs> as opposed okay. to some of these like 20 mana spells. Surely you can, you can discard your hand for less than one mana though, right? Can you? Is there not a way? <laughs> What about the new Miosian, the the black one? The black one's ability, remove its indestructible counter, put onto the battlefield under your control all creatures in all graveyards that were put there from anywhere this turn. Whoa. Boom. So you one you, mana, you discard your Miogen. hand, remove the counter, win. Not bad. Miogen, Not bad. hive mind. Yeah, so everyone has to do it. Oh my god. Oh. See, <laughs> that actually probably is the best way of using one with nothing. See, if you if you hive mind your opponents with it, then <laughs> yeah, you actually, just... <laughs> yeah, you lose your hand, but everybody loses their hand. So you're actually like up, you're netting the scarred, right? Okay, and you're probably build okay. around it. Hive mind actually changes that, and the Miogen would be pretty funny. So <laughs> what is that like? You have to have a hive mind, and then you wait three more turns, and you get Miogen. <laughs> Miogen's like nine mana, right? like nine uh, or eight. eight i want i think it's eight but that's yeah it's a, it is a lot that's almost a curve <laughs> that's that's almost playable i, 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 like I would that. do that that would be really funny unless everyone's hellbent then i just like did nothing yeah yeah i i'm down i'm down to try it out i i think it's cute but it's like it's not good but it's cute i'd run it i'd ship it <laughs> you know there, there's that there's this neo card it's like a saga Whereas like first one is like all your creature all your opponent's creatures get minus two, minus zero. Second one is scry two, draw two. If you have zero cards, draw four. Ooh. The one with nothing. Yeah. But you still discarded your hand. To, to <laughs> <laughs> all of these all of these have this like this little drawback you see that like you need to discard your hand. If you already didn't have cards in hand, the one with nothing doesn't do anything, right? You, this is to pinch a lot of cards. But you, you probably s- wanted some of them, right? <laughs> yeah. You've essentially <laughs> skipped your draw step. Okay, okay. How about turn one combo kill where you yeah. you, you turn one, you've you won with nothing, and then you flash back some creature with uh with, with what mana? No no, no <laughs> there's a the thing oh, where yeah. you were, Oh, you have to sack three creatures. No way. Well like imagine this. You you turn one, swamp dark ritual. No, you can't do this actually. Yeah, I was gonna say like want one with nothing reanimate, reanimate, right? But no, you discard the reanimate. <laughs> yeah, one with there, nothing. There's gotta be something sure. that when you discard makes a creature on the way down. <laughs> no. Necromoba or something? I don't know. Isn't there a dredge? There's like is a that legacy from, dredge is deck that from your library. I don't know what actually triggers it. Oh, I don't know. There's so many bad. I, I'm nothing. sure there's someone <laughs> smarter than us that can figure out an actual reanimator combo with one with nothing. Can you win the game on turn one? Of one yeah, can, like, can you win the game? Because, like, you are throwing away your hand again. All you gotta do is just reanimate yeah. with Jink Taxius and you're good. Sure, <laughs> but how do you get to the reanimate part? <laughs> yeah, you can't get to the reanimate part, which is the problem. It, it involves the flashback reanimation spell, Jink Taxius, one well, with Dread nothing. Return. Dread Return. And then somehow. Getting three creatures. All right. If you figure it out, <laughs> I'll pin it in the comment section of YouTube. If you leave a comment section. If you section. figure it out, watch it next week on Commander Clash. Yeah. Guys, I have no lands. Got a ball restart. We're trying to break one with nothing. <laughs> All right. We got one more question mark. All right. The last one we're going to be talking about for this podcast. Uh, take it away. Seth? <laughs> I'm curious how <laughs> accurate this order is. Like, if it were anywhere close to the order. <laughs> I feel like I feel the like guy Seth from, has from done the last four. <laughs> who's lying? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna change the change the order, I think. Because I have a card that I want to talk about. <laughs> Another we haven't talked about many recent cards. And this one got a lot of 
a lot of hype when it was printed, and I want to hear what you think. Uh, that card is from Keldheim. It's called Divine Gambit. It's two white mana, sorcery speed, exile target, artifact, creature, or enchantment and opponent controls. That player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. So really cheap, almost unconditional removal, which is kind of absurd. The problem is, is you show and tell you show and tell your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Would it's you ever play this card? Would you? I mean, it hits almost anything. Artifact creature enchantment. It's a lot. It's <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> it hits a lot, but the thing here is, you then put a new problem on the board. Yeah, that that, that hits you for a lot. Worse. <laughs> yeah. I would never play this. Why? Well, like, I don't know why they even printed this card. It's hilariously and it, bad. And they got the Mystical Archive treatment, too, in Strixhaven. They actually, not only did they print it, they actually made, like, cool promo versions they of it. They believed in this card. <laughs> they thought it was going to be good. I, this card's going to take off. They're going to love it. They're going to love this card. The Chase Uncommon from the set. <laughs> I, I'm not playing this. Are you, are you playing this? Hivemind. I think. Hivemind shenanigans again. <laughs> Hivemind. Why? Why? So the bailout is Hivemind, Then right? you get to show and tell. <laughs> I mean, this is a group hug card, right? Like, this is, you would actually maybe run it in group hug. You'd like, be like, hey, do you have a cool card in your hand? I'm going to remove this, and don't worry, I'm going to give you something better. What if that I mean, cool card is like, example, you've group hugged, right? You've built up Sphere of Safety and all that, and the cool card they wanted to show you was like Bane of Progress or something like that. Yeah, yeah I mean. Omniscience, uh, in Eldrazi, <laughs> like there's so I many mean, ways this can go wrong. Card. This is what you want, right? <laughs> yeah. This is what you want. This is what you signed up for when you're playing group hug. You want your opponents to crush you with big what, things. What does Containment yeah. Priest say if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield? So that would stop creatures, but that doesn't prevent <laughs> an artifact enchantment. Or an you would also have to have Containment and priests on the battlefield first so they know like they <laughs> yeah, know they, they <laughs> would see it coming yeah hmm. magistrate doesn't work i mean the problem is it's two mana sorcery when you can just three mana instant speed do this thing but a lot better <laughs> generous <laughs> gift or Every you can room, like three I, mana I, enchantment like an oblivion ring kind of i would run deal. a doom blade over this but it gets hard to do mystical archive white card it can't be bad <laughs> there must be some use for this somewhere <laughs> There, okay, no, sure. well, unless our opponent somehow, like, one of the people that you target with it just don't know how phage works or something like that. Like, <laughs> like I don't, I don't know how this is ever played. Like, it's so just the last so time bad. I played show and tell, it went swimmingly well. <laughs> no one dumped anything on the battlefield. So, like, maybe you hope your opponent has no cards. Show and tell reads as creatures, right? Anything Not any permanent. Any but, but that was a pretty unique situation, you right? Own, right? You only yeah, had one opponent, going. and Tomra was phased out or something. So you needed a lot yeah, of things to go right. Out, so they, I guess if they're phased out, you can't target their stuff with those. Hmm. If you could target your own stuff, then it would be, you know, gas. It would be insane. Yeah. That would be They planned that would around be really that. Powerful. They made sure But then it, it would be a blue card or a green card, right? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's just so many... Like, other options that don't lead to you potentially losing the game. Like, if you hate Chaos Warp, that's random. This lets your opponent choose the permanent in their hand to put it into play. This is, like, so much worse than, than Chaos Warp. And Chaos Warp can be pretty risky. Like, we've seen that. We just had that, that highlight short not that long ago with Phil getting the Sandworm Convergence. Like, this is that on Every steroids. Time. Like, oh my goodness. Like, uh, there's no way you can play it. It's just too risky. What if I have a, I have a cool one what if you play discard tribal and you make sure your opponents have no uh, cards of hand? And I've then mined with one this? with nothing. Then this is a free <laughs> roll. Top, top, top <laughs> deck. <laughs> yeah. But then they high mind you if the divide game. And you're like, oh no. So I actually think this card will be good in five years. I think Wizards will okay. one day print a hate card where it's something like, you know, gain control of target permanent that was not that entered the battlefield this turn, but was not cast. Like something along those lines. They're gonna print some hate card about people cheating things into play, and you can combo with Divine Gambit. So I feel one day this will be part of a combo. Are you saying you need to buy your mystical archives <laughs> with Divine Gambit now? Hashtag Probably. We're we're not, not, not financial advice. Right? It's like fifty cents. I mean that <laughs> that seems likely. All you need is like containment priest for any permanent, and then all of a sudden this would kind of work. 
Yeah, oh, you, but I think you, it'll you be much stronger than Katana. I think Wizards will let you steal the card or something like that. Like they, they will, they will print like really strong, like basically anti unfair cards because that's where they're going. So I, I feel like this will be good one day. So this is going to be Crim's next paper deck, is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds like whatever that card is, it's going it's with opposition agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be something Esper. In the Vine game, it will be an all star. <laughs> I mean, we'll this is too no soon, right? Like I still, all the other I still cards have needed no 10 idea. years of card design to become good, right? Well, so. I can imagine they have like a little bit of a chip on their shoulder from this one. Like they thought it was a good card. They had a mystical ar- archive treatment and everything for it. They didn't expect the backlash. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we'll show you. We'll show you type up Esper thing that makes this card good. It would <laughs> have to be your commander. That's yeah. the only way because there's just no way that I would play. Even if there were some random miser card to make that good, I wouldn't play this. It also has to be like a two drop or a three drop. Right. Because like if it's like a seven drop, it's like it's too inconsistent. It has to be very consistent. Maybe it has eminence this ability. Eminence make this good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a fitting end to this. Uh, a, a, another card that has been printed fairly recently. What was it? Two years ago? One year ago. Oh, my God. Time has no meaning. Uh, one year ago, we got two cards from, from one year ago uh, on the list, which is bravo. Well done. Uh, amongst like cards that are like 15 years old. Um, so, yeah, that was our uh, 10 or I don't know how many X many internet friendly title uh, worst rares that we could think of and the cards that we thought uh, make them possibly playable in Commander. Some ideas for you and us if they're available on Magic Online to play them in the future. If you like this sort of stuff um, and maybe want to see more worst lists, maybe mythics, maybe just like the worst cards ever printed, uh, let us know in the comments section. And you can also support us and let us keep doing these podcasts uh, two different ways. One way is if you're listening to this on Spotify or iTunes or um you know youtube do give a like button a little follow button whatever whatever the equivalent is on whatever medium you're listening to it uh slash watching it and also you can support us uh financially by heading over to mtugoldfishmerchstore.com you can buy all the beautiful playmats uh situated on richard's wall and you can buy deck lists uh deck boxes t-shirts all sorts of stuff that you can wear slash put on your cards um, and more at mtggoldfishmerch.com. And that's our show, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed. And until next time, friends, see ya.